What's up, everybody? It's your host, Eric, at EK Baller. Please follow me on Twitter. Please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you like this kind of content, uh, we'd love to have your support. Um, back with another running back rookie profile. We're going to try to kind of plow through the second tier or, you know, second tier, third tier of running backs, whatever you want to call them here. I think there's some really elite talent at the top. And then I guess I'll call it a third tier of really good talent. And then a fourth tier, which is kind of where we are now, um, of still good talent, like guys that could succeed in the NFL uh, that have probably varying, varying chances of, of doing so. But uh, they certainly have some nice aspects in the profile. So tonight uh, we're going to talk about Eric Gray, uh, running back out of Tennessee earlier in his career and then Oklahoma the past two years. A uh, big disappointment for a lot of Debbie guys. We thought he was going to, you know, immediately step in, take the job from Kennedy Brooks and have a great season last year. And that's not what happened. Of course, Brooks himself in NFL back, he's not a bad player. He's, you know, not been a factor in the NFL yet, but, you know, good enough to get on a team. So you never want to discount um, him as, as competition for a guy when you're thinking about, you know, what that guy was able to do at college. Um, so let's launch right in. Uh, Eric Gray is a senior uh, at Oklahoma, five foot 10, 211 pounds, fine size, uh, career production, 549 attempts, 3,087 yards, 21 touchdowns. So how does that compare to running backs with a top 24 season it's close he's not really quite getting there as a runner um the attempts are actually spot on the rushing yards are just a hair low touchdowns are quite low so for a guy with that volume you know we want to see around 32 career touchdowns 21 touchdowns for gray um, the positive news here is his 99 receptions for 827 yards and five touchdowns. Again, keep in mind, Gray did have four years to put together these numbers. So they should be a little bit inflated, right? Um, particularly concerning when we're talking about his rushing production. Um, but 99 receptions is a phenomenal number. Even if you take away, um, you know, a few, he still looks decent. Um, you know, 107 is kind of my average for, for, for an NFL stud. Um, 827 yards is phenomenal. Um, you know, my average, my composite guy here is 633. So he's crushing that number. And the five touchdowns is also a great number. Again, had a little bit of extra time to get there, but still nice to see those numbers. Um, production market share, a 29% dominator. That's a decent number. I'm looking for, you know, low thirties, uh, for, you know, my threshold of an NFL producer, uh, the 55% rush yards market share is a good number. That's, that's right there. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for, um, Rush yards market share, yeah, 57%. So, you know, 2% plus or minus here, I could not care less. And the 17% receptions market share is great. Again, I'm not putting these things in my model, but we're looking at them to see what role he played in college and to try to predict or project a role for him at the next level. And, you know, these things don't always travel, but there's some value in looking at them uh, at, to get some context on who this player is. So his efficiency numbers are, uh, are okay. Um, 6.02 yards per touch is not an inspiring number. It's not a terrible number either. Uh, my threshold 6.5, uh, 1.46 YPC over team. Uh, we're looking for about 1.77. So again, it's not poor enough to be a death knell, but also not itself a feather in the cap. 
uh, 2.5 yard, 5.4 yards created. Again, just a little bit lower than my threshold, uh, which would be 2.69. Um, 0.26 rush yards over expected per attempt. Um, I'm looking for about 0.35, but 0.26, you know, there's plenty of guys with worse numbers that were successful. But, you know, not a bragging point for him, but, you know, none of these things in themselves are you know, a complete red flag that you just can't draft this guy. Uh, 2.02 adjusted yards per team play. It's a decent number. Uh, you know, my threshold is a best season number, that one. Most of these are career averages. Um, the best season number I'm looking for is about 2.2, 2.24. So he's in the neighborhood for sure. And then 0.19 EPA per play. I'm looking for about 0.3. So he's a little bit light on a lot of the efficiency markers. Uh, and we'll say about Gray, too, I mean, if you followed his career, um, never quite lived up to his promise until this year at Oklahoma, where he really uh, excelled. Um, try to pull up his career numbers for this year. I mean, where is he? Eric Gray. So I'll tell you about this year he had. And I don't have all the efficiency numbers on a year-to-year -year basis. But this year, he had 229 receiving yards. He actually did better than that earlier in his career. Um, 33 receptions, 11 rushing touchdowns. It's a great year. Um, and then 1,364 rush yards, which just crushed everything he had done up to that point. In fact, he pretty much doubled his career production this year. So we saw him do it. He's got workhorse size. If I was just looking at best season stats here, Gray would get a huge boost. But I do use in my model, as well as, you know, just talking about the player, a lot of uh, average numbers. Um, and I do think there's some value in looking at career production. So how are his elusive numbers? Pretty good. So 58 missed force tackles. It doesn't quite hit my number, but it's close. I'm looking for 60, 61. It's a good number. Uh, I wager that's this year because, you know, volume does play a part in, uh, you know, any counting stat, right? And that's a counting stat. 3.66 yak per attempt. Um, again, that's a best season stat. So a little bit below what we're looking for. We're looking for 4.17, um, 1.82 yards per outrun. That's a really good number. It's uh, it's not tops in this class, but it's top five or six right there. And it's a good number. It's well over uh, the threshold that I'm looking for. I'm looking for about 1.54. But again, there's guys that were successful in the NFL that had really low yards per outrun. Uh, and there's guys that haven't been great NFL players that had a high yards per route run. But I think it's worth, you know, noting um, as a data point. And then his breakaway percentage of 44 is kind of right there with my composite. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for 45%. So right in the neighborhood. So what do I think about Eric Gray just based on his data profile? Um, again, I'm going to you know, do these data profiles. I'm going to go back and look at some film. Uh, my final model does include, uh, you know, amalgam of data points, um, some elusive data, conference adjustment, teammate score, and also film grades. And the film grades, I do let sway it quite a bit. So that said, just the data profile, what do I see? For the most part, you see a guy that looks like a receiving back. Um, you know, that's been his usage in college. Sure, he's not limited to that at the next level. And he certainly showed that he can carry the load as a runner this year, although his rushing numbers themselves are not exceptional, right? Not exceptionally efficient, uh, didn't excel in an exceptional manner relative to his teammates didn't excel exceptionally in other 
more objective uh, stats like EPA or rush yards over expected per attempt that, you know, again, all do have other factors play into them, but you know, we're doing our best to get, uh, you know, data points that describe a player, right, in, in a vacuum. So certainly a good college rusher. Uh, he showed himself to be this year. Our NFL team's going to look at him and his profile and say, hey, we're going to, you know, throw this guy in as our lead rusher. Probably not. You know, he's probably looking at a committee role. Uh, but has a chance to be a pass catching back in a committee. And, you know, he's shown himself to be really productive in a good system. Uh I mean, we've seen other, you know, Oklahoma guys, Brooks, uh, you know, be successful in Oklahoma and then not in the NFL, but we've also seen Stevenson come in and crush the NFL this year. Um, you know, and there's there's aspects of this profile that look like Stevenson's a high yard per up run, who can call it receiving production. He's certainly not that big. And Stevenson was a more impressive rusher in college. But I think there's a role for Eric Gray. Right? I think the team's going to pick him up later. He's not a day two guy. I'd be surprised. There's just too much. In a different class, he'd have a shot at the third round. But I think in this one, I'd be surprised if he's a third round back. Maybe if he really excels at the combine. Uh, or I haven't caught if he's at the senior bowl this week, but he's the kind of guy that could catch a shine at, a, at an all-star game and raise his draft stock um you know coach is certainly like the veteran guy um but to me he doesn't look like a day two running back and in fact you know, people are talking about it more this year probably shouldn't be chasing running backs with a round three draft capital either i think this year will break that rule because there's just so many good players that there's no way all of the players with a round two grade are getting drafted in round two. A lot of those guys are going to fall to third and fourth. So that's where I'm at on gray. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you like these profiles? Would you like to see me talk about something else? Are there other data points you'd like for me to discuss? Uh, do you want to know more about my process or, um, you know, about these stats? Uh, let me know. Give me some, some feedback on the channel. Hit me up on Twitter at EK Baller. And uh, yeah, that's it. We'll see you on the next one.